Right. So that was day 21. So we, we're, we're now going to do Advent of Code of 2022, day 22. So 22, 22. Let's see what this has. Day 22 monkey map. The monkeys take you on a surprisingly easy trail through the jungle. They're even going in roughly the right direction, according to your handheld device's grove positioning system. That's right. We did that um, on a previous day, didn't we? As you walk, the monkeys explain that the grove is protected by a force field. To pass through the force field, you have to enter a password. Doing so involves tracing a specific path on a strangely shaped board. At least you're pretty sure that's what you have to do. The elephants aren't exactly fluent in monkey. All right. The monkeys give you notes that they took when they last saw the password entered your puzzle input, for example. Okay, so this is our test input. Let's grab that. Right, and then let's grab a real input and take a look what that looks like. Get input 2022, day 22. Ooh. Looks like it's 100 lines wide. Um, and then there should be this thing here, right? Whatever this is. At the end. Oh, my. Okay, yes. So my window's 100 lines wide. So this looks like this goes 100 here. And this is this is 50 then, I guess, because this is 150, these lines. All right, so it is it is very oddly shaped and it has a lot of numbers and R's and L's. Uh, the first half of the monkey's notes is a map of the board comprised of a set of open tiles on which you can move, drawn dot and solid walls tiles, which you cannot enter drawn hash. Okay. The second half is a description of the path you must follow. It consists of alternating numbers and letters. A number indicates the number of tiles to move in the direction you are facing. Okay, so we have a facing issue. Um, if you run into a wall, you stop moving forward and continue with the next instruction. Okay. The letter indicates whether you turn 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise. Turning happens in place. It does not change your current tile. So a path like 10R5 means go forward 10, then turn clockwise 90, then go forward 5. Okay. Um, you begin the path in the leftmost open tile of the top row of tiles. All right, in our case, that's this thing here. So I guess we just, on the first row, we could just walk to the right until we hit. Um, how, sh how should we store it? Maybe we can store this by... Um, I don't know, what would be a good way to do it? Because we have three different pieces of information now. We can't just use a regular hash set like I, I used to. We can just store a hash map of space, dot, or tile. Or we can just make a tile type. Yeah, maybe making a tile hash map with tile type and we could ignore spaces altogether. But let's see what we need to do. If a movement instruction would take you off the map, you wrap around to the other side of the board. In other words, if your tile, your next tile is off of the board, you should instead look in the direction opposite of your current facing as far as you can until you find the opposite edge of the board and then reappear there. For example, if you're at A, facing to the right. Okay, here's A, facing to the right. Tile in front of you is marked B. If you're at C, facing down. Okay, that makes sense. It's possible for the next tile after wrapping around to be a wall. This still counts as there being a wall in front of you. So movement stops before you actually wrap to the other side of the board. All right. By drawing the last facing you had with an arrow in each tile, you visit the full path taken by the above example looks like this. All right. Uh, to finish providing the password uh, to the strange input device, you need to determine the numbers of your final row, column, and facing as your final position appears from the perspective of the original map. Rows start from one. Oh, okay, so it's one based. So I'm gonna still use zero based um, and I'll just add one afterwards. Columns start from one. Yeah, so the same thing. Okay. Facing is zero for right, one for down, two for left, and three for up. Okay, so maybe we just use the same exact order. The final password is the sam sum of a thousand times the row, four times the column, and the facing. Okay, yeah, so that, make, that makes it a unique number, right? Because four times the column... And if there's only, what was it, 150 columns? 
um, that'll fit here inside this. Okay, yeah, yeah. In the above example, the final row is six, the final column is eight, and the final facing is zero, so the final password is 6032. Follow the path given, what's the final password? All right, so we got the puzzle input. Uh, what we need to do now is create our mod module uh, for 22. Code monk, hello. Glad you could join us. Join me. Uh, glad you could come and heckle. Day 22. Oh, I did mud again. I keep doing that. Uh, and then 24. Can I do the code action if even though I move? Yes. And then 22, day 22. And then we should get an unsolved, unsolved over here. Any second now? There we go. So we got a pair of unsolved. Okay, so we can create a tile type. Uh, enum tile of space and wall. Right, and then we can, our parsing is just be, hmm, do we want to keep track of the width and the height? Um, so the map is just a map and then we can make a map struct. Do this, struct, map, uh, the map, um, maybe tiles, right? It would be a hash map of, I guess we'll just use I64 to tile, like that, and then we'll have a width, um, I64. Oh, I, yeah, I guess we can just use U size. Well, we don't want to do that, because if we use um, I64 is here, so we'll just do I64 and height I64. And then we just parse in the map, right? So here, let lines equals AOC lib read lines. Um, test input dot text. Now, one of the things that this read lines thing does is it eliminates blank lines. Um, so we have to be aware of that. Um, and the, there's this blank line between the instructions, right? I saw the blank line there between the instructions and the map. So we just have to, I think we just detect uh, a line that starts with a digit and we should be good. Um, for line in lines. Now, yeah, that's all we should have to do, right? We say let equals line dot chars dot collect back and this should just be a vec of chars right and then we can say if ch of zero that is digit do we have that actually i have this code completion thing maybe i can do is is digit yeah right there is digit then we're almost done. Then we're going to parse the rules. But I won't do that just yet. Let me get this stuff done first. Else for, um, let's do it this way. Let's do a row, comma, line in lines, iter, enumerate. And we can just say for column, C in CH iter enumerate. Now we have the row and the column, and we can just insert that into the map. So self map. Is that what I called it, right? Yeah, self map. I don't need that. Why is that still there? Self map insert uh, row as I64, column as I64, and we're going to map the tile. Um, if C is equal to, oh, right, we need to skip the spaces. If C equals space, let's do a match. Match C. Space. Skip. If it's hash, then we're going to insert a tile wall. If it's a dot, map, insert 
Let's just do that. And tile space. And everything else is a panic uh, unknown jar C. Like that. Right? Does that give us our. That should give us our map. Um, and then we need to parse the rules. So the rules are either a number or a left turn, right turn. So let's do that. Derive, debug, enum, move, forward, left, right turn, yeah, left, and right. That way it's move colon colon left and move colon colon right. All right, so now it's um, for C in CH. Um, if C dot is digit. Um, right, so we need a number. Mm, um, uh, N is equal to N times 10 plus C as U8 minus zero as I-64. If it's not a digit, oh, we can do a match here too, right? Match C. Um, if it's zero through nine, right? Then we're gonna do this. If it's a R, an R. Oh, okay, so we actually need the rules here. So, uh, steps is a vec of move. So if it's an R, that means we're going to push the current N, set it to zero, and then push a right. Okay. Um, match M. Oh, no, we'll do it this way. Um, steps dot push, move colon colon forward by n, n equals zero, match m. If it's r, then we're gonna say steps push, move right. Otherwise, if it's left, we'll change to a left. And if it's anything else, we'll say panic, bad movement, char, m. Like that. Does that work? I think that works. And then here, what I can do is I can print out all the steps. Uh, Printlin steps. And we'll just compare. Make sure everything's looking good. Um, first, we have to fix all our compilation error. Oh, self steps, right? Self. Self. Dang it. And then we need a hash map. Oh, we don't have is digit? Oh, is digit 10, base 10, right? And we can't insert. Oh, oh, we're inserting into the tiles. Okay, yeah, yeah, let's do, let's do that. Impl map. If in insert self, um, location, I64, I6. This way we can keep track of the width and the height as we go through it. And then tile, tile. Self tiles, insert, lock, tile. Width is equal to with dot max lock of, we're gonna do row column, right? So, so if we do row column, so this is, the width is lock one, and then height is lock zero. Okay. No, it doesn't like that, self. 
self. Wow, I'm going too fast here. All right, computing. Does that look right? Um, let's compare here. So ten, forward 10, right 5, or right, sorry, forward 5, left, forward 5, right, forward 10, left, forward 4, right, forward 5, left, oh, 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 yeah, I got to um, put the last one on there. Uh, self steps, push, um, move forward in. Now we should get the last one there. Yep, right there. Okay, good. Um, so now we just need to do it, it implement the maze, right? So that's the parsing done. Let's do the uh, solution. How hard could this be, right? So we're going to start off. What did it, it said the top right or the top left? You begin the path in the leftmost open tile, the top row of tiles. Okay. So one thing we could do in the map is here is insert a um, a directional thing, right? Const dir, and we're going to start off facing right. So right is oh, this is going to be a uh, i64 i64 semicolon four for each direction, and it's going to be equal to facing right is that um, so let's say right is adding and then um, I mean t if we turn right it adds one and we turn left it subtracts one so turning right from facing right means facing down and facing down is adding one to the row adding zero to the column then facing left is this way and then facing up is going to be the opposite and then we can just rotate among those. Um, we need to find our current position. How do we find our current position? Is we look for the lowest row or the first, the lowest value in the zeroth row. So let's look for that. Let start pause is equal to. Um, we want to take the first row and then just loop over. Yeah, we can say map for <laughs> call in zero dot dot self map width. Um, if self map get row call is equal to unwrap so yeah if let if sum tile space is equal to there we go that's what I'm looking for then break um, Okay, let's do it this way. <laughs> start pause equals zero. And then we can just do this here. Uh, start pause is equal to call as I64 break. And then let me, let me just do this here. Start call as our answer so we can actually see if it works. Doesn't like that. Oh, start pause. tiles. Um, oh, we're right, and we can't compare tiles yet. Let's fix that. Um, we still can't do it because um, one's a reference and the other one is not. Um, should I do it this way? Yeah, that's the way it works. Okay. Uh, we do have two warnings. I'm not using dir yet. Eight. 
um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yes, okay, so the start starting col column, yeah, I'm going to change this back to column, is going to be 8. So our starting position is going to be equal to row 0, start column, like that. Okay, and where you're facing, right. This is right, down, left, and up. Yeah. Let me just put a comment there. Okay, so now we just need to go through all the steps. What are we, what are we doing again? Oh, we're, we're trying to, yeah, we go through all the steps and then find our final row and column and facing. Okay, so we just loop over the steps for step in self steps. And this is just a move, so a match step. If we're gonna, we, let's do the easy ones first. Move right. So if we're gonna turn right, then facing is facing plus one mod map dir len. Move left is um, subtract, oops, there should be an equal sign there. Um, facing minus one or facing plus um, map dir len minus one um, left. Okay, so now move forward is the hard one, right? We have to keep going forward for, oh, for n steps. And then our final output is going to be our position dot zero times thousand plus position dot one times four plus facing. Oh, and facing is a u size, right? So we have to do as i64. And I almost forgot I need to add one to these guys. That's all right. We would have figured that out uh, with the test data. Okay. Uh, how do we move forward? So we're going to loop for uh, in zero dot dot n. n is a ref to an i64. So let's do it that way. Um, so to calculate the next po position, next pause, we're going to add our current pause to the direction we are currently facing. Let dir is equal to map dir of facing. Okay. So our next pause is going to be pause dot zero plus dir dot zero comma pause dot one plus dir dot one. And now we need to check the, the map. If there is a tile there, then we we have to check to see if it's a space or a wall. And if it's a space, we can go. So we'll just update ne uh, pause to be next pause. If it's a wall, then we stop, right? And then we're done with, we break out of this loop. If there isn't a tile there, that means we've reached the edge of the map and we have to figure out how to wrap around, um, which shouldn't be too, too hard, right? Um, let's figure it out though. Um, mm, 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 mm match okay we could do it this way we could say if let some tile is equal to self map made tiles get I, I you know I implemented the insert but I'm not implementing the get I don't know why um, next pause so we're gonna look at the next positions tile match tile. If it is a space, then we just update our current position. If it's a wall, then we just break. And this break will break us out of this for loop here. If we couldn't find a tile, 
that means now we have to wrap around. So we say position is equal to self map wrap, I guess. Given the current position and the current facing. That's what we need to pass in, right? Because we need to know which direction we're going so that we can loop around the other other side. We also have to handle the case. Hmm. We also have to handle the case that the next thing won't wrap properly. In other words, we're going to wrap around to a, a wall like they did here. So we have to handle that. Which means self map wrap should return the current position. And then we want to stop, right? We don't want to continue. Well, let's let's do this. I think I think we can get away with just returning the same location each time. Then it might be a little slower, but we can we can speed it up if we need to. Uh, we'll call it wrap. And it takes in a self, and it takes in a position, and it takes in a facing, and it's going to return a new position. Okay. So let result is equal to pause. And then we're going to match on the facing to determine where to go. Uh, and what we'll do is what we'll we'll set the result to be the wrap around all the way wrapped around here, and then we'll just keep walking forward until we find the first tile. So if we're going down here, we'll just say, okay, we just went off the map here. Let's start up at the top and work our way this way. The same thing with here. We walked off here off the map here. Let's walk this way until we find a tile. But first, we need to know where to start. So if we're facing right. Um, we want to set the uh, column back to zero. If we're facing down, we want to set the row back to zero, right? If we're facing to the left, then we want to set, if we're facing left this way, we want to set the column to the last column. So we're going to set the column to uh, self width. And otherwise, um, for facing uh, up, we're going to set for facing up. We want to start down at the bottom. So result dot zero is equal to self height. Uh, and then because facing is not, it's, it's just a number. We have to do this panic. Bad facing. All right. And then right now we're just going to return zero, zero. Um, oh, I, I wanted to see if it would compile, but it's actually going to run this code now if I try to save it. So it'll blow up. That's okay. Um, oh, break. Break. Oh, if I put a comma there. Does it let me do that? It does. We got 1004, but that's that's okay. We're, we're not wrapping properly yet. Let's So let's wrap properly. So now that we know our new starting location, we're going to continue the same direction we're going, right? So we're facing right. We're going to keep going right. So we don't have to change the facing. So all we need to do now is say while uh, self map tile. contains key result result equals result dot zero plus now let's get the facing again in, in dir that dir equals self dir facing dir zero comma result one plus dir one 
and we keep looping until we hit a tile, right? And eventually that'll hit a tile, and then we have to determine if it's a wall. Self map tile. Oh, we, we can just do a match. Self map tile get result unwrap. And it's either going to be a tile wall, in which case we're going to return the position we were, and tile space means we're going to return the new position that we found result okay uh hello zombie killer four uh, i'm not sure what you mean by smash or pass but um okay thank you thanks for joining um do i not have a map in here oh tiles Self tiles contains key. I was I was still stuck in my other mode where I was thinking I was in the um, main part one. Um, isn't this? Oh, this is not. Okay, so we got to just start. Okay, here we go. What do we got? Sixty thirty two. Okay, first try. Should we try the real input now? Um, I don't want to print out the rules because they would be very big. So let's comment that line out. And let's do this underscore and then test 2022 22. 22. What do we got? Hello, Mr. Aftermoons. Uh, Mr. Aftermoons asks, what font do you use? Um, I think it's just the default Monaco font. Right, so we got an answer. Let's see if it's the right answer. I don't see why it wouldn't be. That's the right answer. Yay. Okay, so let's check Clippy. Computing, computing, computing. Oh, is ASCII digit. So we don't need to do is digit 10. So much simpler. <laughs> uh, the things I do for Clippy, just never appreciated. Git status, git add source, git commit dash m 2022 day. 22 part one okay yeah i think it's just the monaco font that I'm, i've got installed so let's see what part two has to offer continue to part two as you reach the forest field you think you hear some elves in the distance perhaps they've already arrived you've approached the strange input device but it isn't quite what the monkeys drew in their notes instead you're met with a large cube each of its six faces is a square of 50 by 50 tiles. Oh. To be fair, the monkey's map does have six 50 by 50 regions on it. If you were to carefully fold the map, you'd be able to shape it into a cube. The example above, six smaller four by four pieces of cube are here. All right. You still start in the same position with the same facing, but the wrapping rules are different. Now, if you'd walk off the board, <laughs> you'd walk around the cube. Uh, what? Okay. Walls still block your path. If you're at E facing up, you come this way. Using the same method of drawing the last facing you had with an arrow in each tile you visit. Now it's this. And now it's 5031. Oh my god. What? Um, let me take a look at this input again. So are they expecting us to figure out how to fold this? Because that would be insane. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to fold or look at a... I mean, I could find out where the faces are and connect them up just by looking at where the tiles are, right? I can just look at each, the center of each one and say, okay, this is this tile, this is this tile. But then figuring out, oh, okay, with this arrangement, we fold it in this particular pattern. Um, hmm. No, 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 no. So, uh, 
Oh, that's right. This Chrome, I don't know why Chrome has to be like that. They're saying, oh, you shrunk one font on this website, so therefore I'm going to shrink every tab on that website. That's annoying. Um, so I think, I think the only way I'm going to be able to solve this part is unfortunately is hard coding the folding. Um, because I, I, I'm not going to, oops, I'm not going to sit here and write code that solves any generic folding pattern. I'm just not. Sorry if you were hoping to see that, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to hard code it. So let's say, let's say this is the top of the cube. Um, let me just draw it out so I have it in my head here. Um, so if we say this, we have the top of the cube. I'll just call it one. And then if we treat this like dice, like a die, then the opposite sides will all have, I'll add up to seven. So let's call this two. Oops. And then that means the opposite side to two is this guy here, right? Because this folds down. So that's five. So they add up to seven. We can make this three. Um, I'll just put a space there. And then what's this one? Where does this one fold to? This folds down, and so this folds over, which is opposite this guy. So this has to be four, which means this must be six. Okay. Um, so all we need to do now is figure out, based on the direction we're going, right? If we're going this way, on face one, then we're going to end up going this way on face three. And we have to translate the row column that we're on to the row column that's over here. Um, and then we have to do it for every, oh. All right. We can write a wrap cube. Uh, take in as self a position. Oops, I put the ampersand on the wrong side. And then a facing. And it's going to return. And because because we're doing this way, the facing has to change. Dante Silas says, after folding, what do you need to do? That's a good question. Hopefully it's the same thing we had to do last time. Um, what are we looking for? Yeah, so it's looking for 5031. So it says the final password is 1,000 times 5 plus 4 times 7 plus 3. So we still end up here on the flat map. So we still use the row column of the flat map to calculate the, the final position. And I'll run the, the test input on this to make sure. Codemonk says, everyone was shocked when they got to part two. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty stunned right now because... Um, got to figure this out so right the, the, what i was saying before was that let's say you're coming off of this edge here you're facing right you're going into here like this dot here right if you go right from this dot you end up here because of the way things fold but instead of facing right now you're facing up so i think what i have to do is return a direction or position and a facing whenever we wrap on the cube uh, but now the hard part is how to figure this out. <clears throat> um, let me take a look back up here for my. Actually, let me move it down here because I'm going to need I'm going to need it for wrapping the cube. Um, do this. Go here. Put that there. Okay. So what we can do. <clears throat> I guess the first thing we could do is just figure out what face we're on and then that would make it easier to figure out what what we need to do when we go off the face yeah let me just make this smaller again so i can visualize it let's let's go with um 
So in order to find out which face we're on, we just divide by 50, I think. And that should just give us our, whatever our current face is. Um, and then once we know which face we're on, we can say, okay, if we're going, let's, I call this face one. And if we're going right from face one, we know we go to face three. And then we can just create a mapping saying, if you're going from one and you're ending on three, or sorry, if you're going on one and going right, then you're going to end on three. And then we can adjust our row column based on that. So let's, tr let's try that. So we can say let current face is equal to self dot face of position. Right, and then face of position is, is pretty straightforward. Face of self of position by 64, 64. And we'll just return um, a u size because it's just one through six. Um, if I divide by 50 for the row, I'll get 0, 1, 2, and 3. face index. I'm going to call a face index because I'm going to index into a, an array here. Dante says, could your encode, if you're walking through a column or through a row, and if you're going to a positive or negative direction, put special instructions on the outbounds and change the value? Yeah, I think that, that that's what I'm doing, right? So I just right now I just need to figure out how the wrapping works. Um, so it's uh, position dot zero divided by fifty times. Why do I do that? My fingers come off the keys, and then suddenly I'm jumping somewhere else. So if we divide by fifty, we get zero one two three, and we want to change it zero three six nine. So just multiply by three plus pause dot one divided by fifty, and that's going to give us. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, right? And then so we can just return um, 0, 2, 3, 0, 1, 0, 4, 5, 0, 6. And it should never get beyond that, right, of face index. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. And this gives us our face number. Dante says, sorry for backseating. No, no, no. I would, I would, I, I'm, if you notice on my tags, I have backseating allowed. So um, I'm happy to hear all, all, any and all suggestions to make this better or easier or faster. Gerardo san, thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. Sorry, I hesitated there because I had to work out how to pronounce your name. Uh, I hope I came close. Okay, so we have a current face and we have a facing. So we can map match these, right? We can say match current face to end facing. And then this should result in this. We'll just come up with an answer here somehow. And it, we should match every pattern that's possible and then yeah and then and then if we come up with a pattern or if we're running the code and the pattern fails then we know we have a bug somewhere so for if, if we're on current face one which is this guy here which is this guy here and we're facing to the right then we're going to end up on three now should i do it th the other way so i can whoops <laughs> use size so I can reason it out reasonably. And now we have to figure out what's a new row and a new column here. Um, let me figure all of these numbers out. I don't know how many there are. So for every tile, we're going to have to look up, down, left, right to figure this out. Gerard says, hee hee, Rust. Yeah, I enjoy Rust. It's fun. All right, so if we are on tile one and we're going to the oh, I've, I've lost my up down left right already where are they 
There they are. Let's copy those here because I need these numbers. Um, like that. There we go. Okay, so if we're facing left, which is 2, then our new tile is going to be this guy here, which is 4. Okay. Um, the next tile is... Let's go tile 2. So tile 2 has two different directions that can go off the map. So if 2 facing up, um, where's that going to go? That's going to go to the bottom tile, which is tile 6. And then 2 facing left is going to go uh, also to this tile, right? Um, I think. Yeah, if this folds down, then this becomes the left side here. This folds down and becomes the top side. And so top, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that goes to tile four. Um, and then for three, three has three different directions that could, you could go off the map. So we can go three up. Um, three up is gonna go to the bottom of the cube, which is phase six. Three to the right um, goes where? Three to the right looks like it goes here. To tile five, right? Because this folds down, becomes the bottom face. And this becomes the right face, right? To the bottom face goes to tile five. Okay. And then three down, which is one, goes to the top face, right? It's just the opposite of this one. One to the right goes to three, three down, Three down goes to one. Perfect. Um, there's a bunch more. So we have tile four, which is this one over here, going up goes to the top face. Dante Sella says, would it be easier if you could put the input as a cross instead of a weird shape? Uh, it would be. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Um, but I, I'm not going to fiddle with the input. It's very big. Um, four to the left, uh, four to the left, which is two. Where does four to the left go? It goes up here, right? Yes, it goes up there. So it goes to tile two. Um, and then we have tile five which also has two directions it can go off. So five to the right goes to this tile here, three, uh, and then five down goes to the bottom tile, which is six. Okay. Dante Sales just thinking about how to simplify the jumps. Yeah, any way that this could be simplified um, would help, but I think I think I've got this. I mean, I, I think I've got the at least the structure right. Figuring these dots out is going to be a little bit tough. I don't know if I can visualize it that far. So far, I'm doing okay. Uh, six has three directions. So six to the right goes this way, which is five. Six to the right is five. I should have copy pasted. Oh, and all of these need commas after them, right? Oh. Okay, I'll let the formatter handle that. Uh, yeah, six to the right, six down, which is one. Six down goes where? Um, I'm thinking three for some reason. I think it's three. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, let me, let me, yeah, let me put three here for now. And then six to the left 
Um, six to the left looks like it might be going to two. Maybe. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to pause for a second here. I'm going to go get a piece of paper and some scissors, and I'm going to cut out a cube so I can, I can do this. Give me one second. Handel, thank you for following. I, you snuck in. You snuck in there while I was out. All right. So now I have a piece of paper. I'm going to fold it to, into this shape here. This shape. So I need to fold it in thirds longwise and in quarters the other way. Okay. Sorry about this. This is not a programming stream anymore. This is a papercraft stream. Right, so fold this this way. Fold this this way. These folds are very bad. I'm not a paper crafty person. And then thirds. And thirds. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a picture of this to my uh, Twitter thing after I'm done. Okay, so now we just need to make sure we cut this out in the right shapes here. So I'll cut this corner off. Right, so that's that. Then I cut this here. And then this comes over here. Countface Dude says, wait, what are we doing today? <laughs> and Code Monk says, uh, arts and crafts programming. Dante says, origami time. Yeah, this is great. This is wonderful stuff. I should make a swan, right? I should learn how to make swans in origami. That's the one thing I keep meaning to learn and I just never make time for it. All right, I'm almost there. Hopefully I got I cut this out right because if I cut this out wrong, this is going to be bad. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So one more little cube to cut. And then we should be I should be able to fold this into a cube. Ropito, thank you for the prime sub. Giving me those uh, bucks, those Amazon um, bucks. Much appreciated. All right, so I think I've got a cube now. I just need to label the sides. Label the faces the same way I labeled them here. One, I gotta see which way is up. Two, up according to the map. So that's two, this is three. This is one. Two, three, um, this is five, four, and six. Okay. So now I can fold this into a little cube and I can see which way things are going. Oh, and I should say which way is, which way is coming which way, right? So this is one. This is one goes this way. Yeah, so for each side of the cube, I can say now this is coming from five, five going this way. Um, and then I can just double check to make sure I have everything correctly. This is five. Um, what else do we have? This is six. Got to get all these. Sorry. Sorry about this. this is not really programming just yet, but I'll, I'll get back to the programming in a second. This is four. Um, we've got five, three. Okay, so six comes this way. And for two, six comes down from two. Oh, sorry, six goes. Yeah. And then that's six, so this is three going up from the bottom of six. Um, still missing a few. I'm almost there, almost done. This is two coming this way. 
and then we have four coming in this way. Um, I'm still missing this side here, which is three going to five. Is that all of them? Oh, no, I'm still missing two more. <laughs> One going down on four. And then... What have we got? Two going left on six. Okay, I think that's all the sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now I can double check everything, right? Going right from one ends up going to three facing... Oh, this is what cube we're on. I need to, mm, I need to return the facing. What, which way we're facing? All right. Um, I have the cube in here though. So what I'm gonna, here's what I'm gonna do is just to verify that we got the right cube. Ooh. The heck? How did I get to this window? And it says six more lines. What the heck did I do? Okay, I have what I did was save was face um, save the cube. So the I mean the face we're on. So let new face and new facing and new position equals this. And then what we can do, now that we have the face, we can actually just do a verify. Assert self face of new pause is equal to new face. And then we can return new facing and new position. That way we know we got this calculation right, right? So the new facing is gonna be, let's do this. Okay, so now f one facing right goes to three up. So we have to change this to up. That's our new facing for that guy. Oh, no, up is three. That would have been bad. Um, right, zero, down is one, left is two, and up is three. Okay, so one facing left goes to four facing down. So we have to make this down. This isn't really programming either, is it? Okay, so two, two facing up goes to, according to my cube, is uh, six facing right. Two going left is four facing right. Um, three going up. I should tape this, right? If I tape this together, it might hold better. Three going up is goes six going up. Okay. Three going right goes to five going left. Three going down is one going left. Okay. Um, four going up is one going right. Four going left. Oh, is that what I just said? No, four going left is two going left. This is very confusing. Uh, five going right. Five going right ends up being three going left. Five going down is six 
going left. Okay. Six. Now finally we're on six. So six going right goes to five going up. So that's up there. Six going down ends on three going down. Oops, that should have been a one. And then six going left is two going down. All right, so that's that. And now we have to figure out the coordinate changes. We're folding paper into real life cubes. We are. Um, we're definitely doing that. Okay. So the question now becomes, for each one of these, how do we translate the points? <laughs> and this is where things get even messier. All right. So if we're on one facing right, we want to change the, we know that the, we're going to go to one facing right goes this to this row here the bottom of three. Um, the row, so this is row column. So the row is always going to be, it's a 50 by 50, right? So 0 to 49. So this is going to be 49 for the row. The column is going to be, we're going to move to 100, right, for the new position. So we want to change it to be the row that we're on. So this goes from 50 to 100, and this goes from, sorry, this goes from 50 to 99. And this is going to go 51, uh, 100, yeah, 100 to 149. So it's basically whatever row we're on, pause dot zero plus 50. I think it'll be easier. Oops, I missed, missed the print. Let me do this. Row is pause zero, let call equals pause one. Oh, and then that's right. We want to, ch we need to check the maze before we actually go. We want to see if uh, we're going to also say, oh, this should be a cert, S S E R T, not asset. Um, we want to ensure that there's a tile where we're going. So if I say let's tile equals self uh, map dot get new pods unwrap, that'll ensure that there's a tile where we're going. So it'll verify at least that part. If tile is equal to tile wall, then we're going to return the old facing and the old position. Else, we're going to return the, oops, no, no semi there. Okay. All right, distractions, distractions. Okay, so we're going from one to four. So now we're going to do the kind of the opposite thing. Um, this goes to zero, right? So um, 50 goes to zero, column zero. So first of all, we're going to be on row um, 100. So we can just we can just put that in. And uh, I want to change this to row so it's easier to read. Oh, I see why that paren disappeared, because it gets included if I say change word. Um, all right. So now this becomes, we translate the 50 to a 0, and we translate the 99 to a 49. So it's just row minus 50. OK. So far, so good. We're going from phase 2 to phase 6. So we're going up this way, and we're facing six going to the right. So we're coming on this side of the face, six's face. Code Monk says, yeah, now the difficult part, the coordinates. Well, we've gotten two down. 
only 10 more to go or however many that is. So we're coming this way on two. We're two going up. And we have to translate. Oh, God. How do I do that? OK, I'm going to get out the paper again. And I'm just going to write the coordinates for each point. This is row 100, uh, column 0, row 100, column 49, 150, 199. I've got a whole bunch more of these to do. Sorry, this is all off, off screen. I should have one of those camera setups so I can show my hands. Um, this is 149, 0, 149. Um, by 49, this is 150, 0, um, 199, 0, 199, 49, 150, 49, okay, that's for all the faces on 6. Now this is row 0, column 50, for 2, and then row 0, column 99, row 49, column 99, and row 49, column 50. Okay, so now if I map 6 this way, column 50 has to turn into row 150, and column 99 has to turn into row 199. So we just say that the column, the row is equal to the previous column plus 100. So column plus 100 for the row. And the row is, and the column is just going to be 0. OK. Wow. This is, this is frustratingly slow, isn't it? All right. So for 2, going left. We're going to end up on, so column 50 has to turn into row 149, and column, oh, sorry, row 50 turns into, row 0 turns into row 149, and row 49 turns into row 100. So that's 149 minus the row. And then the column is just column 0, because we're going right to face 4 there on column 0. OK. Akra says, if you only had tile relative coordinates, it would be much easier. Um, yeah, but how? Mm, if we had so all, each one of the tiles is in 3D space, right? So we could make a 3D cube out of it. But we're just crawling the face, so we still need to be able to figure out. And then the answer, unfortunately, it requires us to know the coordinate we're on in this map. So we'll get there. Um, three facing up goes to six facing up. Okay. So three facing up. This is uh, row zero, one hundred, through row zero one forty nine. We map that to six. Okay, so six is going to be row one ninety nine. Oops. And then um, six. So this is going to be a hundred to forty nine. Minus a hundred. Now, if this works first try, I'm going to I'm going to be in shock. So three zero. 
um, three facing right going to five facing left. So that means we, we swap the rows and columns again. So that is row 49, column 149. All right. And this is row 149, column 99. Okay, so three to five. So we map, well, first of all, the column is fixed at 99, right? So we can put that in there. Oops. Um, but we're mapping um, 49, row 49 to row 100 and row 0 to row 149. So that's just 149 minus row again. Okay. 3 facing down goes to 1 facing left. Okay, so one facing left. One is row 50, column 99, through row 99, column 99. So we know the column again is 99. Oops. Um, the row is going to change. The row depends on what column we're on on three. So we're going from column... Yeah, so we're going from column 100 to row 50 and column 149 to 99. So the row becomes column minus 50. Yeah. All right. Four facing up goes to one facing right. That's still true. Okay. So 50, 50, and then one, oh, sorry, 99, 50. All right. So again, the column is straightforward. The column is column 50. But the row we're on has to be calculated based on 50 to 99 from 1 to 0 to 49. So we just add 50 to the column. Okay. Column plus 50. <clears throat> All right. 4 facing left goes to 2 facing left. Is that true? 4 facing left goes to... That is true. Okay. Look at that. Okay. So now the column is going to be 50. Again, but the row changes. Um, let's see, row 100 becomes fifty, no, forty nine, and row zero becomes one forty nine. Okay. Um, so that's just 149 minus row again. That seems to be coming up a lot. 149 minus row. Okay. Uh, five zero. Five facing right becomes three facing left. Okay. So we're on column 149. Okay, we're, we're getting so close here. And then um, row zero becomes row 149 and row 49 becomes row 100. So this is our old friend 149 minus row again. Okay, 
5 facing down becomes 6 facing left. Oh, I'm missing, missing that coordinate there. 149, 50. Okay, so we end up on column 49. And the row is going to change. Um, so column 50 becomes row 150, and column 99 becomes 199. So that's easy. So it's call plus 100. OK. Final face. We're on the final face. We're almost there. 6 facing right becomes 5 facing up. So it's just, this is just the opposite of what we just did. Um, so 5 facing up, so that means the row is going to be 149. And the column is going to depend on what row we're on on 6. So 50 be 150 becomes 50, and 199 becomes 99. So that's just um, row minus 100. All right, 6, 1. 6 facing down turns into three facing down. All right, and so that means column, the, sorry, the row is gonna be zero. So we're coming down the top of three here. So row is zero, that's the easy one. And the column, um, zero becomes 100 and 49 becomes 149. So it's just the co current column plus 100. Last one, six facing two. Sorry, yeah, six facing left goes to two facing down. Yes. Goes from 50, 150, 199, and it has to go to 50, 99. So it's just row minus 100. OK, and then. Hopefully that's everything. Uh, and this is just a panic, weird location, current, face, comma, facing, uh, semicolon. Still doesn't like it. Um, where did I fail here? Well, let's, I guess we'll hit, run the compiler. Oops. I missed I missed that one there and I missed that one there. Okay, now it formatted. So maybe it'll compile. Panic is not a function. You're absolutely right. Self tiles. I keep doing that. Oh right, and I haven't written face yet. So let's write face. Um oh I thought I did write face. Yeah, it's right here. Expect it. Oh, expected reference. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is a reference. Oh, 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 reference down here. Oops. Um, oh, because all of those are, okay, yeah. Um, as you size. I thought we added, oh, okay. We can just say this. We can say if matches, oh, will that work? Uh, this, yeah, tile wall. There. Three warnings. Um, wrap cube and face are not used. Right, 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 right. Because we haven't written those that part of the code yet. Okay, so that was so part one. I think I think part two is very similar to part one. Um, the only difference is instead of calling this wrap, we're gonna call cube wrap or whatever I call it. What do I call it? Wrap cube. Um, so we could refactor this and just pass in the function to call when we're wrapping. Uh, 
Um, do I want to do that now? I don't want to do that now because I still I still have to get to today's puzzle. So let's just for now we're just going to copy and copy everything and paste it into part two. Um, and then call wrap cube. Is that seriously all we need to do? Um, I must be missing something. Oh no, I did want it on map. What was I doing? What's the error here? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, let new facing new pause equals that. And then we just say facing is equal to new facing. Pause is new pause. And we're done. Uh, Akra says, um, you also need to update facing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was this. Let's see if this is the right answer. I mean, I, I went through all those numbers carefully. Um, it's possible I made a mistake with the numbers, but um, so I'm pretty sure all those numbers are correct. So let's see. Ah, but they're wrong. My answer is too high. If you're stuck, make sure you're using full input data. Oh, yeah, I'm using the full input data. Okay. Um, I've got a feeling it's this, right? There's something wrong in one of these. Um, two facing this way. Six. I know these numbers are all correct. That's... Okay, I'm just holding up the, the cube again here just to look at all these numbers. Um, so that, that one's right. 3, 0 to 149 minus rho, comma, 99. Yep. 3, 1 is column minus 50 and 99. Yep. 4, 3 is column plus 50. Yes, comma, 50. Okay. Four two. Um, it's one forty nine minus row. Yep, yeah, comma fifty. Five zero. Five zero is one forty nine minus row. Comma forty nine. Yes. Uh, five one is column plus one hundred. Comma forty nine. Got it. Six zero. Six zero is one forty nine and then row minus one hundred. Right. 6, 1. 6, 1 is 0, comma, column plus 100. And then 6, 2 is 140. Oh, that's, no, that's it, that's it. Yeah, 0, and then row minus 100. All right, so the only other thing I could have, so those all look right. So let's check the new facings. Uh, 1, 0 goes to 3. 1, 2 goes to 1. 2, 3 goes to 0. 2, 2 goes to 0. 3, 3 goes to 3. 3, 0 goes to 2. 3, 1 goes to 2. 4, 3 goes to 0. 4, 2. Ah! 4, 2 goes to 0. Right. Four going left should end up being two going right. Okay, we found one mistake. Let's keep going. Five zero goes to two. Yep. Five one goes to two. Yep. Six zero goes to three. 6, 1 goes to 1, and 6, 2 goes to 1. Okay, so maybe that was the bug. 
we've got a different number and it's lower. So that's good news because it said I was too high. Yay, okay. Oh my God. Oh my God, sorry. That was more, that was less programming and more mathing than I'm used to. <laughs> uh all right get status oh we got to check with clippy here all right i still have to do today's puzzle so we're going to get right into that get commit am 2022 day 22 part two done and it runs very fast so even though i'm, I'm i've got a very bad well i'm not optimizing the algorithm as much as I should, right? Because here, if we wrap and we end up hitting a wall, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the same position and then try again. So I should compare the before and after here and break, but it runs so quickly. I don't think it'll, and that's the bug mode. If I say cargo run release, I think it's gonna be zeros. It's gonna be very, very fast, so. Akra says, nice. Code Monk says, yay, congratulations. Very well done. Thank you. It's all due to my, my fancy uh, yellow cube here that I've got. I'm going to tape it together and, and post a picture on, on, um, on Twitter after I'm done here. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that it even got up to one. Um, and I don't think it was due to the, the looping thing. All right. Good enough. Good enough. Uh, get status. We're clean, right? Good. 